What's up, guys? So I just got done meditating. Got a super hairy face. Um, but I was just thinking of some things, and I thought I want to share them. Um, so lately, uh, I have been not connecting with people very well. Um, it could be that I'm a know-it-all, and I try to prove my point all the time. It could be a very big problem. But I... Uh, I was really thinking about, you know, I'm not just, I'm just not connecting with people anymore. And, and, and I was talking to my wife, my beautiful, sexy, amazing, fantastic, best friend of a wife, um, Shauna, and I was saying, you know, I just, I have a hard time lately connecting with people whose minds are, <clears throat> are closed, who aren't, that aren't open. And, um, that old saying, maybe not an old saying, but you know, your mind is like a parachute. It's not going to work unless it's open. Really stuck out to me, and so I meditated, and then you know, kind of asked God, asked the divine, asked Jesus, asked Buddha, Archangel Michael. I said, you know, just um, give me a little insight, and and so what I heard is is you know, the phrase from from Abraham Hicks, and it's you're not going to find a lot of people on the leading edge. And what does that mean? Well, the leading edge is the, the place where consciousness is expanding, where people's desires through contrast, through the contrasting life experiences that they're living, um, is causing expansion to happen. And not only that, but they're, through their expansion, they're recognizing that expansion, and they are connecting with that. So they're not just having a... Um, difficult time they're having a difficult time but they're realizing through that difficult time they've asked for more and through more they're now no longer focused on the difficult difficult time but they're focused on the more that they've caused to ask as a result of the difficult time um, and I was like okay good so I'm just not connecting with people because I'm not on the leading edge or they're not on the leading edge and uh, I don't want to be a know-it-all. I tend to be, well, I do like being a know-it-all. Let's just be real people. We all like being know-it-alls. We all like to be told we're right. We like to know that what we're saying is factual, that it's truth. And in reality, it's truth for all of us. Um, but I was like, all right, so I'm hanging out here on the leading edge. I am going to say I'm on the leading edge um, based on my experiences and based on the inner work that I do for myself. <clears throat> and it got me thinking, you know, like, why aren't we all on the leading edge? What the fuck is keeping us so stuck in our way? There's a funny comedian. He's a very satirical, cynical comedian. And he says, when everything's coming your way, you're in the wrong lane. <laughs> and it got me thinking, you know, if these people are hating on me, if these people are saying I'm too spiritual or I'm too much of a vegan pusher, or I'm too much of this, <clears throat> I think that that's on the leading edge. So I was like, my, my, my asking for guidance was really, how do I deal with these people? How do I deal with these people that I'm forced to deal with as a result of my job? I'm not forced to deal with them, but as a, for, as a whether it's um, people in my family circle, friendship circle, um, or people who I work with or that I deal with on a daily basis or, you know, a weekly basis. And uh, I just had this thought, you know, God gave me this thought and just said, just keep, just keep running your race. Just keep playing your game. You know, don't, don't adjust who you are for other people if you know you are living authentically and true to your heart. Keep running your game. Haters gonna hate. It's just how it is. You know, and they don't even know that they're doing it. They don't even consciously recognize that they're doing it because that's just that's just what they do. They're just they're not on the leading edge. They're just stuck in the group of people in the center that that have this little bubble. And they like to stay in this bubble because if they branch out of that bubble, they might be ridiculed. Right? They might try out being a vegan and everyone go, Where do you get your protein? Aren't you going to be B12 deficient? Uh, well, aren't you B12 deficient because you don't eat anything other than chicken and fish? And like, I don't know. You know sorry, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. But run your fucking race. Play your game. Don't fall into the 
um, the bullshit of other people's experience. If you know you're living authentically, fully, truly from your heart, keep running that fucking race. Don't go where the path may lead. Instead, leave footsteps for others to follow a new path. Fucking run your race. If you're watching this and you're thinking that you know people are hating on you, but you're living authentically to what you feel is right in your heart, fucking keep running that motherfucking race. I know I'm cussing a lot, but it is so true. Run your damn race. Forget what everyone else is doing. If you feel that you're on the leading edge, if you feel that you're working on yourself spiritually every day, if you're reading sacred, sacred texts, self-help books, if you're meditating, praying, if you're eating the right foods, if you're exercising, if you're focused on your intention, whether it's business, uh, relationship, health, like if you feel that you are running your game, fuck what everyone else is doing. My doctor, when I was going through my chemotherapy treatment, right, <clears throat> I'm a 16 year old kid. Second time, well, actually, excuse me, let's, let's backtrack. 15 year old kid, just got diagnosed with, with, with leukemia. Actually, I was 14. But, um, <clears throat> and my doctors are saying, I'm at the end of my treatment, and my doctors are saying, don't bench press. Don't exercise too hard because the, the medication, the, the, chemo, the chemical therapy that you were just on, attacked your, you know, it could affect your heart in a negative way. We don't want you to push too hard, we don't want you to have a heart attack. In my heart, I thought that was bullshit. In my heart, in my, in the depths of my being, I said, fuck that, I'm gonna go play basketball. Fuck that, I'm gonna go lift weights. Did I do it all at once? No, I eased into it. But I went out and I played basketball when I felt the intuitive nudge from within. I went and I lifted weights at the YMCA that was 100 meters from my house, and I was there every single day when my heart called me to go there. And you know what happened? The doctor said, wow, I guess you proved us wrong. When I went and got my bone marrow transplant after I had relapsed, my dad asked a world-renowned pediatric oncologist at Children's Hospital Oakland, will Zach ever play football again? That doctor said to my dad, I will never tell Zach he can't do anything because every time I say he can't, he does it anyways and he proves me wrong. You have to follow the guidance of your own beingness, man. You have to follow the guidance of your own heart. Fuck what everyone else is saying. I know in my heart right now that veganism is the right path to health, wealth, happiness. Wealth in the sense of physical embodiment, right? I know that for me because I meditate on it. I pray on it. I listen to the food when I put it in my body. When I eat meat, dead food, I feel dense. I feel heavy. I feel lethargic. When I eat fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds, I feel the, this, this energy, this prana moving through my body. When I have my plant protein shakes, my plant fusion, shout out to plant fusion. When I eat that after a workout, I can feel my cells using that protein to regenerate, to build new DNA for eyes, for skin, for hair, my muscles. And I'm not the biggest dude, but I'm light. I feel great. I have energy. I get up and I love my life. Fuck what everyone else is saying. Fuck what everyone else is doing. Everyone used to laugh at me when I was a virgin at 21 years old. But you know what? I got more interest in girls from being a virgin at 21 years old than any guy around me. Sure, it could have been because I was more attractive. I don't want to toot my own horn, but toot toot. It could have been that I was more charismatic. It could have been that I talked to them like human beings instead of sexual objects. <clears throat> human beings that I would turn into my sexual object. I'm kidding, that's a bad joke. I get it from my dad. But in all honesty, you have to run your own race. I knew in my heart when I was 21 years old, 
that I wasn't in love with any of these women, so I wasn't going to have sex with them. I wasn't going to share that aspect of myself until I met someone that I truly loved and cared about to share that with. I wasn't just going to eat food because everyone says, oh, it's important to have big muscles and blah, 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 and bullshit. I wasn't going to stop exercising because my doctor said, oh, that could affect your heart. When in reality, that exercise changed my whole life. It kept me mentally focused. It gave me purpose. It strengthened my heart muscles. It strengthened my blood vessels. It strengthened my immune system so that I could deal with viruses and bacteria. Fuck the haters, man. And if you're if people are hating on you, good. If people are doubting you, good. If people are questioning you, good. It means you are on the leading edge right now. It means that everyone else is playing in their little comfort zone and you're on the fucking leading edge making a new path for somebody else to follow. Fucking follow that path and you you know, if you see a path where there's a few footsteps, you better follow that shit. Look at the millionaires and the billionaires of this world. You think they were doing what everyone else was doing? Hell no. Look at the people that cured themselves of cancer. Regenerated their eyes so they could see again. Were able to hear again. Were able to walk again. Did they do what people told them? Fuck no. They listened to the guidance of their own heart. They listened to their soul. They prayed. They meditated. They listened. And what they heard was the right answer. And they followed that answer. If you're watching this and you're questioning everything you're doing, you're not on the right path. You're confused. Find one little thing that makes you feel good when you do it. That's the right path. You're trying to be a millionaire. You're trying to be healthy. You're trying to lose 50 pounds. And you're questioning if you should do something. You know that eating that candy isn't good for you. You know that eating all that meat and saturated fat and butter, sugar, white starch, white bread isn't good for you. But you get a slight little satisfaction after you eat it because you're emotionally addicted. Change that fucking behavior. You know it's not right because it doesn't give you, it doesn't infuse your soul with life. Passion, what does passion mean? It means to be infused, excuse me, enthusiasm. What does enthusiasm mean? It means to be infused with God. Damn. To be infused with the creative force. Damn. Get enthusiastic about something. Find one thing. Don't disperse your energy like a light bulb. Focus your energy like a laser. Light bulb can't burn through anything. You focus a laser, it can burn through granite. It can burn through metal. It can slice a human being in half. It's a little dark. <laughs> but run your fucking race. If people are hating on you, for what you are doing, good. Look at the masters in the, in the history of this world. Jesus, Buddha, everybody hated him. Hey, Jesus, he was crucified for speaking his truth. And now what happens? Millions and billions of people. Well, there's not that many people, excuse me. Is there a billion? 7.5 billion? Maybe there's a billion people that are Christian are inspired by his story every single day. Buddha inspires millions of people every single day. But look at the backlash they got. They were on the leading edge, setting the tone, setting a stage for everyone else to follow. Most of us still aren't following that. But we know that they're revered because of their livingness to their own knowingness. They live true to their hearts. That's my, that's my uh, very pro, I was going to say um, improper English and, and ranting and uh, life coaching for the day. I didn't tell you how to do anything, but I did remind you that you do need to listen to your heart. You need to listen to that intuition. When you feel good, it's the right path. When you're doing something good to avoid feeling bad, drugs, sex, food, 
I don't want to feel like this anymore. I'm going to eat more. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I'm going to use some coke. I'm going to smoke some weed. It's avoidance behaviors. Do something that truly makes you feel good. Makes you feel passionate, excited, infused with God. Do that. You'll be all right. And you know what? Don't fuck the haters. Love them anyways. Love them anyways because know that you're setting the tone for their future life. And if they don't set that, they'll come back and they'll do it again. And if they don't set it that time, they'll come back and they'll do it again. Cycle of rebirth. Anyways, that's enough ranting for one night. I love you guys. Um, excuse the, the hairy face. But uh, I'll talk to you next time. See you in a few days. Bye.